Welcome to Inside North Dakota Politics with Nicholas Qualick, Josh Manny, and political correspondent Maddie Beer Temple. Thanks for joining us for Inside North Dakota Politics. I'm Josh Manny. And I'm Nicholas Qualick. You just got all the latest from Washington, and we'll have more insight later when I speak with Eliza Collins from the Wall Street Journal. Also, I'll be talking about the Equal Right Amendment with Republican Senator David A. Clemens. But first, a big story from last week. Dickinson Representative Luke Simons and his alleged past inappropriate behavior and the potential consequences he faced. Maddie Beer Temple has been following this story since it broke. Maddie, unprecedented what happened. That's right, Nicholas and Josh. Thursday, lawmakers voted to expel Representative Luke Simons from the legislature. This comes after a history of allegations of inappropriate conduct toward women in the Capitol recently became public. Representative Luke Simons became the first North Dakota lawmaker to be expelled from the House with a two-thirds vote of 69 to 25. Female lawmakers spoke to a history of inappropriate behavior by Simons directed toward them, legislative counsel, and even interns dating back to 2018. Representative Simons looked me up and down and asked, so what are you wearing today? How humiliating. I have not worn that dress since that day. Every time I go to pick out a dress to wear, I'm reminded of the empty stomach feeling I was left with that day when those words left his mouth. I also asked him to please wear a mask. Representative Simons loudly and intensely replied, Shut the f*** up. Those allegations first became known last week when Legislative Council released 14 pages of documents of informal reports made against Simons. What has happened this past week is unacceptable behavior of the last four years. It's finally coming to light. Over his time in the office, Representative Simons has shown his con continuous disregard for anyone but himself. Leadership has pulled him aside into the office to address his behavior to no results. But those supporting Simons say he deserves due process, and this isn't it. I would like us to get back to discussing the rules, because it's been mentioned that we can't just follow the rules we like. We have to follow all the rules. And when we're following the rules, we can't shortcut the rules. And even if we know what the outcome is going to be or seek to have a certain outcome, again, we cannot shortcut the rules. The resolution under consideration brought bipartisanly by both majority and minority leaders initially called for expulsion. Over the course of the floor debate, amendments to reduce that punishment to censure or investigation failed. Simon still maintains he did nothing wrong and said conversations were mischaracterized. A member of the House said that the record would show. Unfortunately, you'll never know. You'll never know. You never will know. That's what you're doing right now. So if we're going to call each other liars, and I'm not calling anybody liars, um, I would ask that maybe we had a hearing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Following the vote, Simon's attorney commented that the now expelled lawmaker could take further action opposing today's proceedings. It's unclear who will fill that spot in District 36, but currently legislative procedure gives that power to the district's chairman. With Representative Luke Simons now expelled, one political science professor highlighted just how unprecedented that decision was. According to University of Mary political science professor Mark Springer, never in North Dakota history has the legislature moved to expel one of its members. Springer says the proceedings are in line with his understanding of the state constitution, which allows leadership to take action against misconduct. The last time any discipline was taken against a member was in 1890 when two senators were censured. And the only time that I, you know, it's ever come up is with the governor, but not with anyone in the state legislature. And so we haven't had anything of this nature. Um, I mean, there's been people that have actively um, stepped aside or decided not to run for reelection, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past. But it's, it's rare during a session to have this type of um, situation and issue come up. Springer says the session is a bit unique for other reasons, too. North Dakota has never had a candidate die while running for a seat in the legislature or had the same COVID protocols to deal with during the session. Many things. We'll see you a bit later. State senators voted on a bill aimed at making sure the Electoral College continues to decide who's elected president. Yeah, lawmakers passed a bill to wait to publicize the number of votes cast in a general election until after all states' presidential electors have voted 
but the Secretary of State could release the percentages of the votes cast. This comes as traction grows for a national popular vote to decide the presidential election. The movement aims to have states send electors in accordance with the country's popular vote, even if that's in conflict with how their state voted. The bill is to frustrate that effort by instead of providing the numbers of votes, the percentage of, of the vote. The Electoral College acknowledges the sovereignty of the state of North Dakota. Senator Dever is one of the bill's co-sponsors and says the Electoral College protects states with smaller populations like North Dakota by allowing for an outsized say in the presidential elections. The bill passed 43 to 3 in the Senate and now heads to the House. We go back 46 years now to 1975. That's when North Dakota's legislature ratified the Equal Rights Amendment to the United States Constitution. But now lawmakers are a step closer to taking that back. Senate Concurrent Resolution 4010, which passed in the Senate, rescinds the ratification from nearly half a century ago. The amendment reads, quote, Equality of rights under the new law shall not be denied or abridged on account of sex, end quote. Congress put a deadline on when states had to ratify it to 1982, but supporters of the ERA say states can still act. Sandy Marshall advocated for the ERA in the 70s and says the current resolution is a step backward. It's an embarrassment that we have a legislature that would um, pander to uh, highly funded out-of-state uh, legislative efforts to try to get legislatures around the country to uh, de-ratify. Uh, it's part of a larger agenda, and it's just, you know, it sends the wrong message. But as Linda Thorson at Concerned Women for America points out, women aren't all in agreement on the amendment. I am not a victim. Women don't need to play the victim status to be treated equally. No one voting for this clarification is saying they don't want um, equal treatment of men and women, we all want that. It's just that this ERA has a problem in that it opens a door for other things. A genderless society is what I say. A similar piece of legislation to rescind the state's ERE ratification came up last session but failed. And when Inside North Dakota Politics returns, we'll have more on the Equal Rights Amendment when I speak with Senator David A. Clements. For business, no one knows it better than you. Partner with a team that cares as much as you do. Consulting, strategies, solutions, real results. Take the next step. KXNet.com backslash result driven. Attention oxygen therapy users. Your Inogen 1 may be covered by Medicare or other insurance at little or no cost to you. If you've been chained to an oxygen tank, then you know they're a burden. Tanks keep you from living the life you love. I was on oxygen tanks, and I couldn't go anywhere do much of anything. I didn't dare go far. It's time to reclaim your independence with an Inogen 1 oxygen concentrator. Inogen makes its own oxygen from the air around you, so you'll never worry about running out of oxygen again. I wasn't going to run out of oxygen ever, and it was like freedom. I got my life back. I really love my Inogen. The Inogen 1 G4 is lightweight and compact. Plus, it's battery operated, so you can have oxygen anytime, anywhere. Your Inogen 1 may be covered by Medicare or other insurance at little or no cost to you. Call now for your free information kit. There's no obligation. Call 1-800-319-0778. That's 1-800-319-0778. Hi, I'm Jamie. Welcome to Complete Nutrition. The holidays in 2020 are over. It's time to lose those pounds. Instead of another unsafe fad diet, at Complete Nutrition, our products are safe, they're effective, and they come with proven results. We will build you a targeted weight loss kit that will trick your body into thinking it's running a marathon all while you go about your day. You will lose weight starting today. Come on in to Complete Nutrition where you can try it before you buy it. Success starts here at Complete Nutrition. Why'd you abandon Beverly? I ain't abandoned nobody. It was just time to come home. Just be prepared. There's going to be some deep resentment there. These youngers are about to change the game. We gonna get it! All American, Mondays at 7 on the Dakota CW. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX.
Senator David Clemens of District 16, a Republican representing West Fargo and parts of Fargo, joins us now. Thank you for being here, Senator Clemens. No, oh, thank you. So it, you introduced Senate Concurrent Resolution 4010, which seeks to rescind North Dakota's ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment from 1975. Now, a part of this is that North Dakota ratified it in 1975. The original deadline was 1979, and they needed three quarters of all states, which was 38 states, which it did not meet in 1979. It was then the deadline was extended to 1982, still did not meet the, that three quarters threshold of 38 states. Further complicating things in recent years, Nevada, Illinois, and Virginia ratified ERA meeting the three quarters threshold, that's 38. Uh, proponents of the EA argue that Article 5 of the Constitution uh, is silent on, in terms of deadlines, giving a, a deadline for ratification. So why do you think, why, why are you introducing this bill to rescind ERA here in North Dakota? Okay, the, in 1972, on March 22nd, is when the 92nd Congress of the United States uh, permitted the uh, ERA amendment, and that was forwarded on to the states for ratification. That same 92nd Congress also put on a seven-year deadline, uh, which would make the deadline March 22nd of 1979. Now, th this was the same body that authorized the ERA amendment, so they were not opposed to it, but that was the same Congress that also put the limit on it. And so the reason for the resolution is that once the deadline was met, any state that's ratified after 79 should not be counted. And that's uh, really the, the technical definition of this resolution. It, it doesn't say rescinding, it probably maybe means the same thing, but uh, this is really just not counting any states after 79. And in the last three years, since 2017, starting off with Nevada, uh, there have been 38 states, so three quarters, which would ratify the amendment, uh, and put it into the Constitution. Uh, so why now? Why take North Dakota out of the equation? Why rescind the Equal Rights Amendment? All it simply is doing is trying to make no discrimination between men and women in terms of divorce, property, and employment. Because when the ERA amendment was originally written for uh, female or male, you know, or not just discriminating against sex, Things have changed a lot since then, and now we have different definitions of sex, male, female, and that's the one reason that there's concern, because now men could be infringing, a man proclaiming to be a woman could infringe on a woman's rights, and so we feel this is as much protecting a woman as anything. That's part of it. The other part is, of course, the deadline. If there's rules set in place, then the rules should be followed. I mean, we're going to have chaos in this country if we don't follow any rules. I mean, we're already seeing that in a lot of different areas where the Constitution is being disregarded and laws are going ahead without obligation to the, uh, to the rule. Now, uh, Linda Thorson of, for uh, Concerned Women for America says that the ERA opens the door for a genderless society. Do you agree with that? And what does that even mean? I haven't talked to Linda about that particular comment, but uh, let's take a church or any religion, uh, even religions that are, are foreign to us in the United States. Uh, they have very strict guidelines and beliefs in their religion and if we allow things like the ERA in this time and age they may not want men or women serving in different positions and this would be one area that now they wouldn't have anything to say about it because it's going to be in our constitution and so I think that's just one example where this could easily infringe on the freedom of worship. Now, proponents of the ERA say rescinding it here in North Dakota is a step backwards. Would some sort of compromise be 
starting from scratch, rewriting the ERA. Absolutely. They, for the Congress to forward an amendment to the people through the ratification of the states, I would welcome that. If they want to start over, I'm certainly not the one to say, no, you can't do that. No, that's everyone's right is to try and move an amendment forward, but let's do it in a legal process. Senator Clemens, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Celebrate every day with National Day Calendar. Join me weekday mornings during Good Day Dakota and Studio 701 to learn what's fun, unusual, or unique about the day. National Day Calendar on KX is brought to you by Affinity First Federal Credit Union. Does your basement leak? Tired of living with a wet, musty odor? Water problems don't go away, and the winter snow will only make the problem worse. Call the experts at Innovative Basement Authority. They'll solve your problem permanently. And now is the best time to call during the winter savings event. Get the best pricing of the season and get your basement fixed now before the spring thaw. Call 855-649-7764 for your free inspection or visit InnovativeBasementAuthority.com. We hear things every day. News comes at us at the speed of a tweet. People speak in sound bites. The world is not giving us a chance to listen. And I want to change that. So every night, I'm going to sit down with America's top newsmakers and celebrities. But we're not going to play gotcha. We're going to do something you don't see too much these days. Have a conversation. Banfield, weeknights, 10, 9 central on News Nation. Update the lighting in your home today with 11% off everything now at Menards. Find your style with Patriot Lighting and choose from our large selection of lamps and accessories. Complete the look of any room with one of our matching style lamps. This Lance Tour Sheer Lamp comes in an oil rubbed bronze finish with seated glass shades. Only $69.99 after 11% rebate. View all of our lighting options right now on Menards.com. Save big money at Menards. There's something for everyone at the 2021 KX Sports Show in Minot, March 12th through the 14th. Log on to KXNet.com for details. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. Covering North Dakota politics can be a challenge on a number of levels. The amount of news there can be, the sensitivity with which a story needs to be handled, and of course, making sure our news coverage remains unbiased. And as our next guest will tell us, covering national politics, specifically an election, can be just as, if not more challenging. Joining us now is Eliza Collins, national political reporter for The Wall Street Journal. Eliza, thanks for setting some time aside for us. Of course. Happy to be here. Now, you've covered the 2016 presidential election and the 2020 presidential election. Uh, there are so many aspects I want to ask you about, but I'll start here. What's the biggest difference for you covering politics now than, say, four years ago? Well, the political landscape has completely changed. Of course, President Trump, you know, loomed large in both races. But in 2016, he was just a businessman who was running for president. In 2020, he had had four years of being president and he was running for re-election. But I've actually, in 2020, I spent some time focused on Bernie Sanders. I followed him all around the country. And in 2016, I was doing that for um, Trump. So there's definitely, the populist movement has grown. It's grown on both sides. The idea of, you know, really the personality breaking with the rest of their party. I think we're seeing both with Republicans and Democrats. Now, you mentioned former President Trump. He doesn't appear to be done, at least thinking of his political future. As you know, he made an appearance at CPAC, signaling that he may run again in the future, but he said he would not create any new parties. He also said, quote, uh, we've been doing a lot of winning, but Republicans are not in control of the Senate, the House, the White House, though President Trump nominated three conservative justices to the Supreme Court. So what else would you consider a win? Well, they did actually chip away at the majority in the House. So we have to give Republicans that they were able to narrow Nancy Pelosi's majority in the House. But there's no question the 2020 election went much better for Democrats from the top down. They were able to 
very narrowly win over the Senate. It's actually a 50-50 split, but Vice President Harris can act as a tiebreaker. They won the White House, and they were able to hold on to their House majority. But all of this is by very narrow margins. And so Republicans in the 2022 midterms feel like they will be able to win back the House. They're hoping to win back the Senate. That map's a little bit harder. And then looking into 2024, I think we can expect a very robust primary if President Trump does not choose to run on the Republican side. I think he may get other competitors even if he chooses to run. But there is no question that President Trump is certainly the head of the Republican party right now. And if he chooses to run, I think it he is more likely than not to be the Republican nominee. And speaking of winning, uh, the House has voted on President Biden's COVID relief plan. It awaits a Senate vote. Now, we are taping this a couple days early, so by the time this airs, we could have a Senate vote. But with that in mind, with the new vaccines and other states lifting mask mandates, including here in North Dakota, among other factors, uh, Americans seem to be becoming less intimidated by COVID risks. So. There are a lot of Americans, though, that are still feeling the effects of the pandemic, whether that be financial or physical. So uh, with that in mind, what are you hearing as far as the COVID relief being passed by March 14th, the day when that uh, unemployment aid expires? So Democrats are scrambling to get this done right now. The timeline does look like it'll happen. As you mentioned, by the time this airs, it is possible they will have passed it. But they basically, in the Senate, began the process to move this through. And Republicans have said they will do everything they can to slow it down. It looks like this is going to pass. Democrats are united. They have those 50 votes. Um, Vice President Harris can act as the tiebreaker. It already passed the House. So this is expected to become law. But just when is the real question, and Republicans will be able to use some procedural things to slow it down. They will try to add some amendments. Um, but this is a $1.9 trillion bill that has many, many things in it. But one big thing that, you know, many of your viewers, I think, probably have heard about is that $1,400 stimulus payment. So that on top of the $600 that happened right before the end of last year would equal the $2,000 the Democrats Democrats promised that they would be able to do as part of their campaign. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, the Senate working on getting this approved, and we talked about this being President Biden's plan. You know, from the beginning of his presidency, which didn't start not that long ago, he talked about uniting the country. How well, even with this bill in mind, how well has he done to unite? Well, this bill is very popular with the public. It is popular on a bipartisan basis with polling, which is how the White House is characterizing the bill as bipartisan. But it is not bipartisan or was not bipartisan in the House. People are watching Alaska's Lisa Murkowski very closely in the Senate. She is the one Republican who said she, you know, is possible she'll be persuaded to join Democrats, which would certainly be a win for Democrats because then they could say the bill was bipartisan. But certainly this is a Democratic led effort. And so Biden promised to work across the aisle to leverage some of his old relationships. He has not done this on this COVID bill. He's had some meetings with Republicans, but he and Democrats really are pushing forward this massive bill that they decided it's got a lot of Democratic priorities in it. And so I don't think that they can claim, you know, it's not bipartisan in Congress, although Americans do support it. We will have to leave it there. Eliza Collins of the Wall Street Journal, thanks again for your insight. Thank you. Inside North Dakota Politics will return in a moment. Thank you, North Dakota, for nominating the remarkable women in your life. Now we want to introduce the finalists to you. Join KX News at 9 on the Dakota CW and KX News at 10 every Tuesday during the month of March as we feature inspirational stories of these remarkable women. Remarkable Women of North Dakota is sponsored by Basin Electric Power Cooperative and Berg's 24-hour towing and crane service. Sometimes you need someone to help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is here. Answered locally by First Link. Connecting you with resources of help and hope.
Dial 1-800-273-8255 to get connected. Throughout the past 90 years, one thing has remained a constant. The Thomas Family Funeral Home has helped comfort families through the passing of a loved one. Through three generations, the Thomas family has cared for you and provided ways to preserve your loved one's memories. So with peace of mind planning, you can focus on one thing, celebrating a life remembered. Thomas Family Funeral Home, our family serving your family for 90 years. Attention all Medicare beneficiaries. There are exciting extra benefits in 2021. Doctor and nurse visits by telephone, rides to your medical appointments, private home aids, fitness memberships, and even home delivered meals, all at no additional cost. You may be able to receive a Medicare Advantage plan with zero copays, zero deductible, and even a zero monthly premium regardless of your income. Please call 800-862-5883. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. With COVID-19 on the minds of North Dakotans, far fewer have visited the state capitol this legislative session. That's right, but that doesn't mean those who protect it are not standing guard to keep it safe. Maddie, you spoke with a North Dakotan who is in charge of capital security. That's right, Josh and Nicholas. North Dakota's capital security sees about two to 300 people come through the building when the legislature is in session, down from about 1,000 a day last year when COVID protocols weren't in place. Sergeant Tim Coughlin has worked for the State Patrol for 14 years and has directed capital security for the last three. His team oversees several state buildings, including the library, the Department of Transportation, and the governor's residence. He says the break in the session is helpful for more than just the lawmakers. This is kind of the interesting part of legislative session. You know, we go from being really high paced and busy to this lull in the action, so to speak. So it's kind of a good chance for us to recuperate, maybe give a couple days off to some people, uh, do some equipment maintenance type things and, and then get ready to go back at it again. In past sessions, schools used to take field trips at the Capitol and hundreds more people would show up to testify, but the pandemic and access to virtual testimony have changed that this year. Definitely a change for all involved. Maddie, thanks so much, and thank you for watching Inside North Dakota Politics. Have a great week.